Okay, good to have you back. We'll get started. There is a question in the chat section. Um, it says, ma'am, does demons know where we are lacking a week so they make their way in that area? Yes, uh, this, this question, the answer is yes. They know where, where we are weak. OK, so that's another thing for us to be careful about. Because demons, as we said earlier, they have an, uh, like an hierarchy, a structure. They are specialized. They're looking for places where they can be most efficient. OK, so if they find a weakness, they know that they can shine in that area of weakness. Um, and so, yes, in our lives, we have to be very careful. We have to do our best to be strong in the Lord and overcome those areas of weakness. Allow God to come in, like, you know, pray about those areas of weakness and say, God, you know, uh, uh, please help me. Give me your word. Give me your, your ideas on how I can be strong. Okay, sometimes. If we are weak in a certain area, one of the good thing is to to um, flee from it. Okay, so just if if you feel like you know lust is your problem or addiction of some sort or lying or money or whatever, right? What we can do is we try to keep ourselves out of that zone. If I know, like if I go there, I'll get tempted to gossip. I just don't go there. Flee, get away from that place. Okay, so that's one of the ways in which we can protect ourselves. So you, we need some strategies, personal strategies, to take care of ourselves. OK? We'll talk about it. This also will be there later. But I hope you got your answer. I just had a small question. Yes. Uh, just lingering in my mind in the last class as well. But huh? uh, are angels or uh, demons visible to our eyes? Because there are some scripture portions which says, like, you know, I saw angels descending and ascending up to heaven. But in reality, when you hear people uh, say that, you know, I saw an angel, I saw a demon, how true or false is it? Mm. OK. So um, are angels or demons um, visible? Okay. Firstly, we have to understand they are spirit beings. They don't have a body. We just clarified that. Even angels, uh, but then the angels, we know that they have uh, a, like a glorified form of, of some sort. God has given them. Okay, Their structure and their form. Now, demons, very clearly, we saw they are disembodied spirits. They don't have a structure, that kind of a body here on the earth. Now, after saying that, uh, when you say, like, you know, I saw angels ascending and descending, uh, I think it's John chapter 1, right, like verses 40, you know. Uh, one way of looking, uh, one way of perceiving angels is through your spirit eyes. So it, it need not be natural eyes, OK? Uh, either when we are praying or even otherwise, we may sense spiritual the spiritual realm and uh, the happenings in the spiritual realm creatures in the spiritual realm okay so the way we are actually seeing them their form one way is through our spiritual eyes they don't ex like in the natural form and shape they may not exist but in the spiritual they exist and our spiritual sense is picking it up okay so that is one way second is can they have a form in the natural. Answer is yes. Sometimes angels, heavenly beings, can take form and shape. Okay? And they can appear momentarily. How do we know that? You know, when you go back to the stories of uh, uh, Abraham, we know the angels came. They fed the angels. right? They hosted the angels. A uh, lot, the angels came. He protected them. He kept them inside the house. So there are times, for whatever reason, God may physically, into the natural realm, send angelic beings. And they are visible. Now, what we've noticed is they take a form. They took the human form. And they came. Right? Is that their actual form? No. They can take a form, and they can come. Does it answer your question? Yes. Yeah. So in line with that, so let us say you you we meet X Y Z 
Yeah, I'll, I'll just come to the question. Yes, the question. Yes. Arum, arum. Okay, please hold on. So let's say we meet a lot of people in life, in day-to-day -day life, and when you see someone being extremely manipulative or, you know, that form of deception with an intent, mm. so sometimes is it right for us to conceive that uh, he or she is demon-possessed or it's a form of a thing? Mm. Or is it wrong to just uh, determine based on the character and then mm. conclude that? Uh, mm. Because okay. we are at times also are at fault. We are at times also sin. Mm. Okay, so see, it's helpful to know where the issue lies. So you're talking about maybe a, an individual who seems to be very deceptive, manipulative. Um, now, what is the source, you know, that is causing that person to be like that? We could look at it at, uh, I, I'm just stating three uh, areas that I am aware of. Now, I don't know if there are other areas. One is demonic. OK, so if that individual was weak, um, you know, mentally in terms of their willpower and all that, then demons can take charge, they can influence. So the person could be influenced by demons or when they are an unbeliever, we might even see that they are demon possessed and the demon is actually working through them. So that is one source. Secondly, we could say that physically they are not well. Okay, sometimes you have uh, chemical imbalances in the body temporarily. You know, somebody has gone through a surgery and then they're suddenly like, you know, they, they're behaving different, they are acting different. Uh, but that is, what is the cause of that? There, there are some issues, you know, um, uh, in terms of the body composition and how things have changed, right? So then we have to address that. That's not a demonic issue. So that's another way, like physio physiology. Look at the physiology. Third is mental, psychological. So that if we identify that somebody has an issue psychologically, then the approach that we would take is to actually counsel them and see if they need any medication. Got it? So we have to diagnose it correctly, Akhil. Otherwise, uh, if we look at anyone who has a problem, like a personality issue, and we just tag them and say, hey, demon possessed, we may not actually find the solution for that person. Okay? So we have to be very careful, very careful. And I know in the Christian circles, because we talk about demons and all, the easiest thing to do is to just say, hey, this person is demon possessed. But uh, that may not be the actual source. All right. Um, any other questions before we move on? Okay, there's a question about hard copies of uh, books. So we do not uh, courier hard copies, uh, Shubo. We have posted the same notes in Google Classroom and uh, eLearn. You can download it. You can print it out if you prefer a printed copy. Uh, but yes, for our on-campus students, we, we do print. But for online students, uh, we don't courier printed notes. OK, so that would be the um, answer. I hope it's OK. Uh, Lucy, please go ahead. I'm so sorry I, I muted you because I wasn't sure if you were asking a question. Yes, sister. Sister, in the area I stay in, uh -huh. that performed some uh, demonic activities like sacrifices and the woman who who was possessed and all with dancing uh, mm -hmm. that was in my in my in the front of my house itself okay like how, how do i rebuke uh, such uh, things happening in our area and uh, to keep ourselves uh, under the protection we declare uh, that day i was in prayers and i declared god's protection oh. and but uh, in our areas where the other children are getting involved in that uh, activities, even uh, mm -hmm. like uh, Roman Catholics and such other children were. Mm -hmm. How do I speak to the, uh, those kids? And uh... OK, so um, to protect yourself, I think you we can make uh, declarations, Lucy. As we said, Psalm 91 is a yes. good scripture to go to. And uh, we could also. I'll just read out another passage for us. It's 1 John chapter 5 and verse 18, where it says, We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. 
Okay. So okay. basically what the scripture is saying is that when we are born again, we are born of God. We are God's children. That is the first thought. Second thought is uh, such a person who is born again keeps himself, mm -hmm. meaning they are walking in the path of righteousness. So as long as we are walking in the path of righteousness, Satan has no access. So our declaration is, I keep myself. I am born of God. I keep myself. The evil one does not touch me. So let the, if these activities are happening, you know, uh, in your lane or next next door, don't worry. Okay, Nothing okay. will happen to you because okay. you are under God's protection. And the evil okay. one cannot touch you. That's what the word of God says. Unless mm -hmm. we as believers provide access. And we'll talk about it later. Is and that Lucy? Uh, to the area, how can I declare God's word in the area to the yeah, for the area? Just yeah. pray for the area, pray for the area, you know, bless the area, declare the word of God over that um, uh, region, pray for the young people, pray for their minds, right? Okay. Uh, and okay. you can engage in binding, losing, right? You can do all of that. You can take authority as the Holy Spirit leads you, as you discern by the Holy Spirit, you can operate. In authority these are all things that you can do but another way of approaching generally um, can one person pray for protection against demonic spirits over a region yes but more effective would be if you have two or three more people in a group you get together and you pray for your area or uh, we, we we say that corporate prayer for the city for a region, corporate prayer is so much more. Um, I mean, it it's not about effectivity, but uh, there is something about numbers, especially in spiritual warfare, when you're talking about dealing with you know demons or over a region and all that. So you can get together in groups also, Lucy, and pray yes, for the area. Yeah. That might help. Yes, Thank you, sister. Okay, sure. Sure. Uh, yes, let's now go to Sister Gertrude. Uh, you have a question, Sister? Yeah, Sister, I have a question. Mm. Uh, sister, if you have the uh, gift of discerning spirits, then can you see the spirit, whether angelic or demonic? Yes. So, uh, yes, uh, Sister, we can. So the, there are uh, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit described in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. One yeah. of which is the gift of discerning of spirits. Yeah. So as the name suggests, we are able to identify, you know, whether there is a spirit from God or if it is an evil spirit. If it is an evil spirit, uh, sometimes, I mean, I've seen in my own observation, people are able to tell which spirit it, it is without asking, you know, what is your name and all. They can easily tell, hey, it is this spirit, it's operating like this. So that uh, is the ability that the gift of discerning of spirits is able to give us. Now, example, you can think about um, uh, Apostle Paul, uh, Sister Gertrude. You remember yeah. a time, yeah, in, in Philippi, there is a girl with yeah, the yeah. gift of divination. She goes around telling everyone, uh, these are the servants of God, listen to them, listen to them. But Paul gets angry with her. I mean, she's mm. doing positive publicity. She's saying, listen to them. Paul must have been happy that more people are going to come, but he was upset. Why? Because yeah. he understood that that spirit is not from God. And he rebuked, he cast out the demon spirit from that slave girl. Okay, how did Paul know? Same thing discerning of spirits by the holy spirit he could tell that a demon spirit is operating okay, okay. is that thank fine you. thank you yeah sure okay uh yes uh, shani yeah um okay so you answered a question about us being able to see demons but in terms of i know you said with angels it can be in a natural form in terms of humans can demons be that way in terms of in the form of humans too my answer is yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and you know these things happen momentarily, temporarily. They just present themselves and they are gone. Okay. So they just take that form maybe to attract um, people and, and all that. Uh, but yeah, I'm not able to think of any any incident in scripture where 
a demon took a human form. Okay, so I am not able to think of that as of now. But my answer is yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I think we have exhausted the questions, but more questions might line themselves up soon. But we'll go further. So far, we've seen the characteristics of demons. We said that they um, are specialized, they are territorial. Um, and now let's talk a little bit about Satan. Okay? Satan, we understood where he came from uh, and you know uh, what he's up to. Now, Satan has many names. That's what we observe in various passages of scripture. Now, why do we study the names of Satan? Because these names will tell us what job he does, okay, what is his character looks like. So go ahead and look at those names. If you're comfortable um, looking at another language as well, you can do that for your better understanding. But I'm just going to quickly go through what is given in our notes here. So Satan, we know. He's called as the devil. Okay, other names that he carries, uh, all these are from scripture, of course. It's there in our notes. Other names would be adversary. Adversary means enemy. Okay, somebody who's opposing us. So adversary uh, or enemy. Some places that word enemy is used. Um, slanderer is used. Revelation 12, 9. What is slanderer? Slanderer is somebody who um, uh, sp like speaks evil of another person, like just to uh, just to kind of tear down their their image or tear down their um, you know their opinion among people. So that's a slanderer. And the Bible says that Satan is like that. He will slander. He will slander people. Let's move on. Um, he's also called as the accuser. Okay, why is he called as the accuser? Obviously, he he does that job. So, how does he do this accusing job? Yes. Doesn't he remind people of their past? By accusing him, is that one way? Yeah, you're right. So uh, it, it's one of the ways in which he accuses people by bringing up the past. But he could also um, magnify a lie and uh, try to deceive people. Right? He would accuse you. If you go back to Adam and Eve, did God really say? Right? He started like that. You will become like God. So he, what he was trying to do is he was trying to, um, like, put God in a in a place where he was saying, "Look, God is preventing you from having the best." So there's like an accusation against God. Uh, and uh, when it comes to us, our identity, like, even to Adam and Eve, he questioned their identity. He put a question in their mind that actually you're not perfect. There's something that you're missing out. Okay. Uh, and uh, so you're not good enough. You're not good enough. So he just begins to put these lies into our minds, accuse us before God, like you're not good enough, you're not capable. Uh, and, and that's the way he functions. And that is why he's known as the accuser. But also in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9, he's called as the accuser. He's called as the accuser. That's his job. So when we hear accusation in our minds, right? So one of the sources from where it's coming is Satan. Satan will accuse. Whereas God, in his word, he has affirmed us uh, about who we are in Christ. OK? Uh, and, and that's why we must be aware. When we are aware of the word of God, then we won't easily allow Satan to do whatever he wants to do. Okay, so that's one of his jobs, accusing, accusing. And he loves to do it all the time. Okay, and uh, we will read about we read about it's a battle for all of us. It's a battle. At some point or the other, he'll try to talk to us and say, "No, you're not 
holy enough you're not strong enough you know you don't know the word properly this and that and but when we give into it that's when we become weak and we fall instead what should we do what did jesus do and satan came with uh, suggestions he yeah he talked about the word of god jesus said it is written it is written so you see knowing the word is what gives us the strength against satan so the accuser can do his job but as long as we know the word and we speak it against the devil we are victorious in our battle okay so he's an accuser then other names that are given to him would be serpent old serpent dragon deceiver uh, in 1 peter 5:8 he's like a roaring lion okay why roaring lion what what characteristic comes out dominating okay yeah how about um, just trying to scare people or if you put it as intimidate people he loves to make us fearful okay that oh satan might do this satan might do that so that's his way of projecting himself as something bigger than what actually is so he's like a roaring lion a roaring lion is scary everyone's scared like if you hear a lion roar so he's like a roaring lion because he loves to intimidate people and cause fear in people's hearts he's a tempter to jesus did he did he spare jesus no even jesus he tried to tempt and he said i'll give you all the kingdoms okay just bow down worship me thank god jesus knew the word and he said no it is written it is written okay so the best way to fight the devil is know the word and have the word you know settled in our hearts and bring it up against the devil every time he says something you say the word okay so that's how we uh, battle that's how we overcome he's a tempter time to time he'll tempt okay that that's his job he's always looking at you know when can when can this person fall when can any believer or anybody he's after everyone and he wants people to fall that's what he desires right so his job is to tempt people he's a deceiver again going back to the garden of eden deception only isn't it uh, did god really say uh, and uh, he showed them the uh, apple or whichever fruit that is apple controversial again so the fruit and it was good for the eyes and uh, you know they were misled the people were misled because he told them half truth you will become like god but he didn't say that you you will uh, that you know disobeying god is wrong you will miss out on the privileges that you have now he didn't tell the full truth only little bit truth when we speak little truth what happens it's like deceiving someone you're telling people that it is a certain way whereas it's not there's so much more to it which is a different way so that is deception and so satan is known as a deceiver loves to fool people and waiting uh, for those who will give in to his lies and deception then god of this world in second corinthians 4 4 it says the god of this world has blinded the eyes of the people and notice it doesn't say capital g right even the translators have made it small g okay god of this world uh when we call him the god of this world we must always remember that satan is no comparison to god tell me why let's let's compare come on what's so different god and satan a uh, sister god is a creator and satan is a creation yeah so god is a creator whereas satan is creation how can you compare there's no comparison we are also created so we are here to worship god because he is eternal creator creator god okay so we must remember that satan is just a created being so when we say god of this world he has power to manipulate for a season 
So maybe that is why he's termed as the God of this world. But that doesn't mean he's God. There's no comparison between God and Satan. Okay, and uh, I mean, we can talk about so many other things, the uh, character of God, the character of Satan, the power of God. God is all powerful above everyone. How much power does Satan have? Limited, limited. There are only certain things that he's allowed to do in this season. After this season, that will also be gone. Okay, uh, and um, yeah, he is limited by himself. There's only one Satan. When we talk about God, we talk about the characteristics or the attributes of God. We say uh, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. God knows everything. Uh, God um, is everywhere. And God is able to do all things. He's all powerful. Can we say that about Satan? We cannot. He does not know everything. His thinking is also very limited. How each one of us, our knowledge in a lifetime, how much knowledge we can have. He, that, it, that's as much as his knowledge goes. He's limited in his knowledge. He can't be everywhere. He can be in only one place at one time because he's a created being. Okay? Uh, is he all powerful? Can he do anything, everything, cause calamity? Actually, no, he can't. He has limited power. Okay? So these are things we must remember. Just because it says God of this world, it doesn't mean that he, is, he has capacities like God. He's not. No comparison to God. He's a created being. Okay. Um, prince of the air. Prince of the air. Um, prince of the air also means that like he is the commander of the demonic kingdom. Okay. Sometimes people refer to it as the uh, second heavens. It's not the heaven the where God is, but people just use the term like second heavens. Okay. So, uh, Maybe that's why he's called as the prince of the air. But our understanding is that he's ruling over the demonic world. Okay. Angel of light. He can appear like the angel of light. Again, this is part of his deceptive work. He looked like an angel, but don't trust him. Okay. So the appearance of something nice, something good, but it will only lead us to destruction. So he comes in like an angel of light. Beelzebub is another name. Beelzebub means the lord of the dung. Okay, so uh, one way of looking at this is, or the lord of the flies. That's the meaning of Beelzebub. So think about this. If there is a plate of food, which is uh, like leftover food, which is unattended, okay, you just take a a plate of uh, leftover food and you leave it outside your house. Okay. In a couple of hours, what can you expect? Yeah, flies, some insects, they'll just come towards that food because it's rotting, isn't it? So the this term Beelzebub, it indicates that his activity is like that. When there is sin in our lives, right? He he can attract himself to that. He'll come there and he can do what he wants to do. Okay. But what if the plate is clean? You just clean the plate, you know, it's uh, squeaky clean. You put it back. Would you see flies coming to the clean plate? Never, because there's nothing left in that plate. They, there's got to be something rotting for these insects to come in. But this name, Beelzebub, reflects on the way he behaves. If there is sin in our lives, whether we like it or not, he knows where to come. He knows how to get entry. And then he'll do his stuff. So we have to be careful. But if we don't allow sin, we just read 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. You know, uh, we are born of God, and uh, one who is born of God, he keeps himself. Meaning, we are walking in righteousness. There's nothing in our lives which is not exposed before God already. So if we are living like that, no king of the flies, king of the dung cannot come. right? So that is our understanding. Now, let's move on. Uh, Belial is another name that he has. Uh, Belial means uh, worthlessness, without profit, destructive. So each one of these titles is painting a clearer picture for us about who this Satan is, you know, like a 
deceiver, accuser, uh, and uh, person who's working against God. Evil one, wicked one. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. OK, so he's a thief. He steals from us. He steals our peace. He steals our joy. He steals our uh, energy, our time, our relationships. If we allow him to do that. So the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Other names that are used for Satan, murderer, father of lies, okay? speaking lies into our minds. Um, so this is how Satan is. Let's stop for a little bit and maybe take up some questions. All right, I'll come to you, Shani. There's a comment here in the chat section. Sanjay says, Satan is always looking for filth to accuse us, OK, because he is the lord of the tongue. Correct. Yeah. Sure, uh, Brother Sanjay, we just discussed that. Uh, go ahead, Shani. Yeah. What did you say, the prince of the air? What does mm. that mean? Can you go over that, please? Yeah. So. Um, you see, in the in the uh, Bible, uh, there there is a mention of the third heavens, okay, the third heavens, and uh, possibly because of that, there is also. Um, I mean, I've heard people say the second heavens. It's not mentioned in scripture, and the second heavens is, is something like you know when uh, we read about Daniel uh, and how there was there was a war between, again, going back to Prince of Asia, Prince of Greece, Michael. So they were warring in between. They're not in heaven, OK? Uh, but they're not, not even on the earth. So it, it is said that the kingdom, the demonic kingdom, uh, dwells in the second heavens. It's, there is some such concept. Uh, and so based on that, probably he has been called as the prince of the air. Oh, OK, I understand. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, Kofi. I would like to know why Satan is called the Morning Star. Hmm. Why is he called as the Morning Star? Uh huh. Yes, yeah, the Morning Star. Hmm. Okay. So uh, this term, the metaphor morning star, uh, is from Isaiah 14 and verse 12. And my take on it is uh, he, I mean, he had that kind of a glory when he was in heaven. So probably that is why he was termed as the morning star. So yeah, that, that's all I have to say, unless there's someone else you, you have more uh, information about that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll come here now to Warren. Warren, uh, please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you mentioned like, uh, you know, that, that Satan sort of tempts us and mm -hmm. accuses us. Now, uh, obviously, he would be accusing, you know, putting thoughts in our head. So does he have the power to enter our minds and enter our heads to tell us things? Mm -hmm. OK, so does he have the power to enter our minds? Um, see, he can he can plant thoughts in our in our mind, Warren. Uh, and that is something we know because we've already discussed. He's a deceiver, accuser. What is that? Suggestions, right? He, he gives us suggestions. Um, entering our mind would be through his suggestions. I don't think uh, as a as a being he would enter our minds to present these ideas. I, I hope that's OK. Did you did you get your answer, or are you looking for something? Well, yeah, for example, now, for example, like say, we have, we've had a failure in the past. Mm -hmm. And then we we say, OK, and you know, we confess to God, and uh, we try to get you know forget what's happened in the past. But from time to time, we mm -hmm. suddenly, it, there are times when we can reflect on it, and you know, these things come back. To tell yeah. us, you know, yeah, this is what I did, but isn't that our just our own self trying to, you know, go back to what was happened? 
Mm. Rather than, you know, it's the sort of Satan telling us because obviously, I mean, yeah, he can put things in the in the way to remind mm. us of those things. But when it comes to we are sitting alone and thinking about uh, the pa past, it's just us reflecting on the past, isn't it? Okay. All right. Uh, I, I see where you're coming from. Uh, so if we uh, consider what is said in Second Corinthians chapter 10, I'll quickly just read a, a few verses there from verse 4. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Okay, so that was 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. At the end of verse 4, there's a term known as strongholds, pulling down strongholds. So the primary way in which Satan uh, wants to affect us is by giving suggestions. Okay, so that would... Um, cover accusations, deceptions, lies, the whole bag okay, of, of uh, such things. Now, what you're talking about, Warren, is let's say we entertain those thoughts. Okay? Then there is a progression. Again, we are going to talk about this a little later on. In the mind, you know, generally, the norm is that on the outside, these thoughts come to us, we kind of receive them or we reject them, okay? But if we entertain them, if we receive them, it could so happen that we can progress to something known as a stronghold in the mind. That's where it is in the mind, Warren. Uh, at that point, what is happening is inside. And demon spirits can gain access to the strongholds and we could even say that demon spirits dwell in those strongholds they come and live there because what is a stronghold a stronghold is like a fortress right a fortress that protects people people used to live within that fortress now what is a mental stronghold it's a place where demons can live so that's when the whole demons entering into the mind, living there, all of that happens. And uh, going back to Shani's question, can a believer be demon-possessed? I said, no, believer cannot be demon-possessed because Holy Spirit is inside us. But when we said a believer can be demonized, it means demons can live in the stronghold of the mind. You got it? Holy Spirit is living in the spirit, but demon spirit is operating in the mind. Okay, so Warren, I, I went a little deeper than required probably. I hope I didn't confuse you. No, that was perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. All right, uh, let, let's move on. Uh, uh, Sanjay, yes. Yes, I would just like to add a thought to what uh, Brother Warren had shared. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to thoughts, uh, broadly, we can divide thoughts into originating from two kingdoms. Either the thought is coming from the kingdom of light, it's coming from God, or the thought is coming from the enemy. And mm. so if we look at thoughts as a seed, we need to know what the fruit of that seed is. If the enemy puts a thought into our mind, whether even though it's seemingly good, what is the fruit of the thought? Where is it leading? If that thought is leading to something that is not edifying for us as believers or not edifying to the body of Christ, we can assume that thought is coming from the enemy. But whenever God gives us a thought or idea or a scripture, it is for our edification to build us up in Christ or to build the body of Christ. So we need to look at, we need to be able to see the fruit of, from the seed or whatever thought is in our minds. Where is it leading us? Just just a thought on that, that's all. Okay, sure. Thank you for um, you know adding uh, that point as well. Uh, we appreciate that. So uh, Sanjay is saying when there's a thought we need to consider where it's leading, what the fruit of that thought is, and then sort of, you know, accept it or uh, let it go. Sure. Um, all right, let's move ahead then. We talked about Satan, his character, and things that he does, um, and his names suggest, you know, what, uh, what his uh, 
role is and you know what what he does in people's lives now coming to the list of uh, the kinds of demonic spirits we've already stated that demon spirits are very specialized uh, and here is a list for us to consider uh, i'll quickly read a few names and um, they'll, uh, they're quite self-explanatory. So spirit of antichrist, deceiving spirits, um, doctrines of demons, jealous spirit, familiar spirit, blind spirit, deaf and dumb spirit. So each spirit will do what they're called to do. And this one thing, the, the familiar spirit, right? Familiar spirit is what Diksha mentioned. She, I was asking, do demons know what our weaknesses are? So sometimes there are certain demons, that's their job. They, they, they literally like analyze you, they scan you, and uh, they can mimic, they can mimic you. And uh, they, they know you through and through, familiar spirit. They become very um, acquainted with us, and then they can sort of play around. So uh, all, all these spirits and the jobs that they do, you can just understand it by the names that they have. Spirit of infirmity, Foul spirit, spirit of disobedience, spirit of divination, lying spirit, perverse spirit, spirit of heaviness. Um, so we understand that many such uh, you know, manifestations are not just normal and natural. They can have a demonic origin, but not always. OK, don't call everything demonic. That is error. If, let's say, you know, if you, if you pick up spirit of heaviness here, which is mentioned in Isaiah 61. If someone's feeling down and every time we say, hey, that's a spirit of heaviness, come on, let me cast it out. <laughs> that may not be the case. Maybe they're just a little upset and sad because something happened. Okay, let them be. Hopefully they'll recover from it and feel better later on. But there is something known as a spirit of heaviness. Now, even after encouragement and everything, all the counsel and the situation changing, the person is still very sad, right? And uh, things are not changing. Maybe, maybe there is a demonic influence behind that. So that's how you diagnose. That's how you analyze. OK, so that would be a list of different spirits. Some more information about demon spirits. Um, Demon spirits believe and tremble before God. There are scriptures written right next to these statements. So you could uh, actually go and look up those scriptures. I'm just reading it out. So demons know that uh, who God is, and they tremble before God. Uh, then demons have names. We've already seen that. They have degrees, uh, levels of power, wickedness. Uh, demons have will they have the freedom to choose okay it's it's not like we can override their will because they're also what are they they were they're just fallen angels okay, the way god has created them they have a choice they decide what they want to do so they have a uh, will and freedom to choose okay demons no believers who walk in authority Demons are fallen angels and not dead people. I think we clarified that last time uh, when people say that a dead person is there, his spirit is there. Biblically, there's nothing like that. When somebody dies, they either go to heaven or you know, they are waiting for the judgment in hell. So that's what it is. So human beings cannot continue. Their spirits cannot continue on earth if they die. Uh, who's on the earth? Remember Matthew 12, the spirit, they roam around. Okay, uh, they go here and there to find themselves a house. So demon spirits can mimic that dead person and give that uh, appearance of you know that dead person being in that home or saying something and all that. Okay, come on. Now let's move on. I think we've we've already dealt with whatever has been listed here. And there's a little bit of information about angelic beings. We've talked about it. As well, we said angels are ministering spirits who help those who are born again. But how to activate angels? By the word of God. So declarations are something that we can make to see angels at work. Talking a little bit more about angels, uh, we've listed out you know different kinds of angels here. So there are assignment 
angelic beings called cherubim they have specific assignments whenever we talk about michael see i told you satan likes to copy so in the kingdom of god there are specific assignments that's why in his kingdom also there are specific assignments so notice there uh, like michael is a warrior angel whenever you hear about michael it would have to do something with you know war battle and god wants battle he'll send his warrior angel so there are different angels that, which have their own functions what about gabriel what kind of an angel do you think he is messenger okay announcement so he sent when there is an announcement to be made um then there are destroying angels or uh, they can also be termed as plague angels that also come into war during divine judgments so the passages are given here for us to refer to um there are ministering angels that i talked about they are helping angels they'll come and help the believers right so those are known as ministering angels and there's another category of angels known as the seraphim seraphim are worshiping angels in the presence of god you know you read about angels with wings they cover their face and they fly around they worship god they are seraphim so there are categories even when it comes to angels so that's briefly <laughs> about angelic beings satan and his demons we will move on to the next topic here um next week so i won't start off with chapter 4 yeah chapter 4 methods of working we will begin in the next class um before we close this morning and anything more to ask or share okay sister gertrude she asks when you have panic attacks and anxiety what spirit is it uh so the same answer stands sister uh, gertrude i mentioned earlier that everything is not a spirit when we have anxiety uh panic attacks maybe it has to do with the way we are you know processing things um and, and so it could just be at the psychological level and if we can find help we might see that it gets better on its own but if it doesn't after all the intervention then yeah it's probably demonic thank you sister sure okay <laughs> i have never been asked this question uh, but yeah obviously the answer is yes so the question uh, that was uh, asked is does satan have any feelings so he has because you know he has a personality he has a mind so yeah true what feelings i don't know <laughs> does he have feelings yes yeah hmm Mm. Yeah, very good question. Yeah, so uh, the face of Stephen, right? When he was being martyred, uh, the scripture says that it looked like the face of an angel. Okay, uh, people people felt that it looked like the face of an angel. So he's asking me, how do they know what the face of an angel is like? Hmm. Maybe I mean they would have heard it from. Uh, others it's just my imagination because you know when you read about people like zacharias right he as a priest he was inside and then he comes out from the presence of god uh maybe men like him would have shared with the people saying hey i saw this i saw this vision i saw the angel look like this like that maybe they just shared and the people had that picture in their minds and when stephen looked like that they said hey he looks like an angel so yeah i feel like that's how okay all right okay
Yeah. So <clears throat> Diksha's question, if a person dies, where will their spirit go? As I stated earlier, if they are a believer, their spirit will go directly into heaven. Uh, if they are an unbeliever, it will go to hell. OK, uh, till the final judgment. So final judgment, we know that there are other things to come. But up until that time, that's where they will directly go. But definitely, they will not be on the earth. Fine. OK, so since we have uh, reached the end of our uh, session here, let's close in prayer. Other questions we'll take up next class. Uh, all right. Once again, I want to request somebody from our online batch to pray. Could one of you please pray? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this hour of study. And uh, we pray, Father, that whatever you've taught us in your word, Lord, that uh, we will be able to not only uh, retain it, but even apply it in our lives, Father. Father, we know that you are Lord above all, Father, that you are seated on your throne and no one is bigger or more powerful than you. We know, Father, that we ought to look unto you and to look towards your word for strength and uh, wisdom, Father, and that let the lies of the enemy fall apart, Lord, in our lives and around us, Lord, as we live our daily lives. Let every lie of the enemy be, be exposed and taken down, Lord, by your word and your spirit. Father, we pray that we will walk boldly, Lord. Uh, we will dwell in your word and we will we'll look unto you, Father, as we journey together, Father as brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. We also pray, Father, for a blessing upon the entire faculty and all the students and their families. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Sanjay. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Hope you enjoyed the classes for today. We'll meet again next week. Bye for now. Thank you, sister. Bye.